Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, today's Mike O'Mara show is brought to you by our Amazon page. Please remember to shop Amazon, and when you do, go to MikeO'MaraShow.com slash Amazon, or click the Amazon link on our website. It's the best way to shop, and the best way to support this program. Now, on with the show. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. I uh, I am a slave to the Apple Corporation. I'm convinced of that. I'm, I'm, we I'm all a slave. Are, I think. You sound I'm like Mr. Robot. <laughs> I, I truly. I was sitting there and uh, I have my iPad. I have my MacBook. I have my iPhone. I have my iPads to the uh, come in. One of the iPads had a tiny little charging cable that was just a oh, little teeny tiny ee. bit off and that means it was a dead battery and then i and then right before the show because i uh, want to charge my my little phone because i use that to uh, monitor our little running time yes there. that's what running I running time and, and i was sitting there with seconds to spare trying to get the teeny tiny little charging cable in the back of the apple but the apple corporation i realize i'm a slave yeah. to uh to apple they that's eat, what that's what i am you eat what they feed you you know what i do a lot i'll look down and i'll say why isn't my ipad charging because i've put the cable in between the case and the <laughs> ipad not in the <laughs> hole but it feels like it's gone but you know it's been plugged in but get- do you think we're uh, we're too spoiled when we start bitching about uh technological things that were never even possible before like uh, for example like like uh, will, will we get to a point where the charging element of our lives the battery right. side of our lives will be less problematic uh you know, and, and here's how I process it as an American. Is there anybody working on that? Well, we, uh, is someone else world. doing that for me? Huh? Uh, there's that? wireless charging that is now in play with a handful of carry, uh, well, brands, uh, including the iPhone with the iPhone 8 coming. But you will also need the special wireless charging pad right. in order to charge it. Yeah. Which will be attached to the wall. Yes. Of course, it's not really wireless. There, it's just less wireless. There is some technology over the horizon and look you make fun of me you tell me that i'm not gonna have kids i'm gonna go sterile it's a microwave it's not and it it will happen within our lifetime that we will have special rooms in our homes where you can just put your charging device in and it will wirelessly charge from the wall almost like an electromagnetic field right and then you can take your phone with you to the doctors (laughs) when you have your chemotherapy because you have cancer (laughs) from all of the wireless charging which has never really been proven am i right about that it's never really been or disproven (laughs) no one knows it's it's never really been proven as to you know what what happens with that but i but i feel as though you know i'm a little bit uh jittery technologically down here because we are about ready to uh Bring the entire cocoon neighborhood mm. online. Oh, that'll be good. The flip of the switch. Yeah, and, and it'll the be thing like lighting about, the Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center. It, the thing is, all the homes are going to be wired now, whether they whether they want to be <laughs> or not. All the blue hairs on Netflix. Exactly. I'm so, watching a show. Oh, oh, House of Cards. I'm hearing about this. <laughs> Saturday, I'm walking the dogs. Saturday afternoon, it's probably 4 o'clock, 4.30. Right. I'm walking the dogs. Car comes up. One of my golfing buddies, right? One of my golfing buddies comes up and he goes, Two hours. I said, what? what? Two hours. I had my, my cable installed. They put me in. They, they hooked me up. Two hours. My screen froze. I don't have any TV picture. <laughs> I'm driving around the neighborhood to try hey, to find the guys I'm that are working I'm trying to look at TV and the screen's all frozen up. <laughs> he wasn't. He's not one of those. Old, he was just frustrated with uh, the lack of performance. And, uh, you know, I rely on the Comcast family yes. to to treat me very well down here. Yeah, so you're, I'm a, you're like a, you're not just a VIP. You might as well be a stockholder. Yeah. I'm a stockholder. Right. We, we have Comcast <laughs> up in uh, up in Washington. We have Comcast down here. And, uh, you know, I, this is, you might not approve, Oscar, of the way that I'm, uh, I'm proceeding with this because we've gotten the meetings at Cocoonville. We've right. gotten the letters from the people at Comcast and we have gotten, uh, specialty phone calls we've got everybody's telling you you can say here's your period to sign up to sign up i'm going on the uh i'm not going to f with it plan because i'm already wired into the comcast system yes laissez-faire bon cher well you're doing that because you've got rob spiewak has new orleans on the mind more than anybody has new orleans on the mind very excited with certain aspects of the show that i think are going to play very well my my outfit for the stage already have you 
No, what are you? Uh, what are you going to be uh, wearing? I really haven't given it much thought, you know. Other than uh, you know, I'm like, Carla, can you take forty pounds off of me in three days? <laughs> You're in the steam box. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shannon no. got her dress this weekend, and oh, I made nice. and I made sure I had everything for my suit. So what are you wearing? Okay. A suit as well. Full suit, Mike. Yeah. Full suit. You, you. What are you wearing, Rob, for the regular show? For the regular portion of the show, a suit, a simple two button suit. All right. Why are you I'll mad wearing, at us? I'll be wearing jeans and a bowling shirt. That's good. Um, well, there we go. people spot you from a distance. Right. Thank you. <laughs> There's Thank casual you superstar Mike yeah. O'Mara. What happened yeah, to Charlie Sheen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did he eat Charlie Sheen? Rob is excited, and we're starting. I'm starting to get excited about New Orleans because uh, here's the way. Rob called me today because Rob uh, it, Rob knows that I'm looking forward to one element of our live show aspect, that's going to be yeah. that's really going to be better. So Rob calls me and 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 has an idea that he wants to throw at me, which is I I think it's a good idea. But when Rob talks to me, I don't know what carrier he's using in the car because it's like I have an idea for. Th- you, and I, and you know, I've I, o- I only get it. I only get it. I have lots of conversations with you um, on on your cell phone, but the only time that it's problematic is when you are driving into work, mm-hmm. and it's happened multiple times. So, where do you think this the, this I degradation the, in the cell quality is must coming be from? With Kia AirPlay, is always. Oh, are you using Bluetooth? Of course, I have to go hands free. Otherwise, I'm breaking the law. So it's Bluetooth. It's just yeah. like I would say to a caller. It's on those the, ham hands. I, Rob, I no, think I, that's not the ham they, hands they, because Bluetooth has no hands involved. No, the well, ham the Bluetooth hands sucks. The, your dro- Bluetooth is terrible. I will accept that. Car. I will accept that. But, but my the, hands have nothing to do with it. But what I got, I think the idea. I think we we had enough connectivity where the idea you have is spectacularly funny. I can't yes. wait and, to hear it. Oh, I'm not telling anybody. I'm not even telling anybody what we're talking about. But I mean it's either. just gonna be it's gonna be funny and uh, and also it's gonna come. I, the, I'm not giving anything away. It'll come towards the end of the show. It might oh. be yeah. when when Rob and I will both probably be like buzzed enough to make it like even better. <laughs> Hey, listen, I don't care if better. Oscar hates it. I don't care if the audience hates it. You and I are going to have a great time with it. That's true. That's yes. right. Uh, well, I guess it's off to uh, Destination XL today to uh, to get myself a <laughs> uh, proper proper suit. XL? <laughs> no, I'll what go to Dillard's. That? I'll go to Dillard's. It's a it's a big and tall men's shop. Oh, Oscar. okay, Melons. Uh, it's overpriced. Melons. It's, uh, <laughs> it's truly overpriced. Uh, and I got that great jacket that I wore, but I wore it a year ago, and I literally have not had occasion to wear a suit jacket for one year hey you that know is what? the god that is the god's honest truth i have not had a suit jacket on for one year i didn't go to ben's wedding so i didn't have enough i went to church four I think times I wore a, in 10 I think days I wore a blue blazer me. wore a blue blazer to church one day i think i did up in maine four times in 10 days for me with two weddings and a funeral yeah, did you? So I, I noticed you're you're gonna wear to the show one of the suits you wore to the wedding. I can tell you got that suit. You got that suit that looks good on you. It's Where did you get suit. your suit? Well, as you know, Mike, if you go through my closet, right? There are like, different. It's, Glee, it's like Gleason's closet. Different right? eras of a man's life, and sure. I'm dead set in the middle. It's also part of the, the This Is Us collection. <laughs> the Toby collection. No, it's the Toby collection. <laughs> the Chrissy Metz collection. <laughs> the Chrissy Metz collection. That's great. Don't make a hey. mess of yourself. <laughs> Rob, uh, listen, we're going to have to break here in a second because we've got uh, Van Jones is coming on from CNN. Uh, he's got a new book, Beyond the Messy Truth, how we came apart and how we come together. So you just let me know when we need to break and I will break. But the fact is, right do, is now that we're at a point where we probably should hang out for him. Oh, oh we should. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's be professional. Let's take a break right now. We'll be right back. Right now. It's the Michael God. Mara Show. Bro. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Sally hung around the Broadway area and tried to break into broadcasting, but the only roles she ever seemed to wind up with were in the bedroom. Then one day, as she would later tell her biographer, the voice of God told her to take diction lessons, and her whole life changed. Hark, I hear the cannons roar. Is Hark. it the king approaching? Hark, I hear the cannons roar. Roar! Is it the king approaching? No, no, no. The cannons roar. The cannons roar. The cannons roar. Hark, <laughs> I hear the cannons roar. Is it the king approaching? 
Sally practiced faithfully every day for many months. Her natural speech was a great obstacle to get over, yet through diligence and perseverance, plus a rather special, intimate knowledge of many Broadway personalities, it was only a question of time before she emerged a full-blown star. And now, the makers of Lady Lydia Facial Cream bring you Sally White and her gay white way. Good evening and cheers to you all out there. My first exclusive. Clark Gable was in town this week in uniform. And where did he go? To El Morocco, naturally. That brunette on his arm was Lolly Hayes, an up-and-coming starlet. Hope you had fun, Clark. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his office chair, here's Mike. You watch how this works, Rob. Live from the Fiverr Studios in our nation's capital, this is the Mike O'Mara Show. The Mike O'Mara Show is a worldwide podcast and radio show with loyal listeners who get it. If you're here, ladies and gentlemen, you are in the... Yeah. Uh, we are on air on demand and heard 24 7 on the new TMOS app. Update it now and get our show all day, every day. You can reach us at 888 920 more. That's 888 920 6673. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now and brought to you by Blue Apron. Happy anniversary, Yay. Blue Apron. Woo! This month, Blue Apron is celebrating its fifth anniversary by bringing back uh, its top 20 recipes as picked by you over the past five years. Your favorite recipes are back for a limited time. Try them out by going to blueapron.com slash TMOS. There's never been a better time to discover that Blue Apron is the better way to cook. For less than $10 per person per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-proportioned ingredients so you can make delicious home-cooked meals in 40 minutes or less. Blue Apron has easy delivery options to fit your needs. And since there's no weekly commitment, so uh, you only get deliveries when you want them, that's great. It's another be- you know, wonderful thing about Blue Apron. Blue Apron's uh, freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they're going to make it right. Check out this week's menu and get $30 off your first meal with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash TMOS. Uh, you'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's Blue Apron. Apron.com slash TMOS. Blue Apron is a better way to cook, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do we have Mr. Jones on yet? We do. Let's, uh, let's get right to it. At the beginning of the show, a uh, gentleman that I have tremendous respect for. I admire this man, and I watched him uh, religiously during the uh, campaign season on CNN. Van Jones is joining us. Van, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Good to hear your voice. Uh, good to hear your voice, Van. The book is uh, Beyond the Messy, How We uh, Came Apart, How We Come Together. And uh, let me get it out of the way because I know you're going to get asked a lot today when you're doing your little radio tour today. You've said that you're not interested in running for office. Is that still your position? Is it the same as an hour ago, Van, uh, that, that you are not running for office? I, I, no, I'm not running for office. I have seen the best in the world, Obama, do it at close range. It is the toughest job in the world. My job is to try to make the media a little bit less insane and try to make it safe for, for good people to, to put out good ideas. And that's what the book is about, really. For both, Actually, on both sides, the good people are getting gunned down, and I'm trying to fix that. Well, I've talked about the fact that I'd love to have the, you know, maybe maybe a Republican, maybe a Democrat, somebody, maybe an independent, maybe uh, somebody that comes, uh, you know, an Angus King style guy, somebody that comes from the world of politics that might be the white knight, the savior. Uh, you, you know, you, I, before I get into the, the gist of how we fix everything, because you're, you know, you're talking about fixing the media, you're kind of in there, you're in the, the CNN belly of the beast. You, you wrote this book after the election. In my opinion, you were kind of the face of the anguish that many of us felt with the results of the election. My question to you, you know, you were out there with a camera in your face. I was basically halfway through a bottle of Irish whiskey calling my friends and relatives going, I don't understand the way it's going. I have, you you know, you were there, you were there on point. How long did it take you to get back on track after the 2016 results were in? You know, I, I didn't really get off track because I had been begging and crying and pleading and making myself just obnoxious to everybody I knew, saying that Trump could win. And I right. felt like Cassandra, you know, uh, I'd seen a future, but nobody would listen to me. In June of 2016, if you look on, online, 
I not, not only got his, his victory right, I got every state right except for Wisconsin. Wow. And so, um, so it was very heartbreaking, but I wasn't as, as completely thrown off. Look, the reason I wrote the book is because I think that we've got the analysis wrong, and I think we could wind up with eight years of Donald Trump if we don't get the analysis right. I think we think there's too many bad people doing bad things in government, and that's certainly you know true. But the bigger problem is that there are too many good people frankly, in both parties, who just don't know what to do at all right now. People are just stuck and stunned still. And it's been two years since the guy came down the escalator, and we still can't get our our feet under us. So this book, a third of this book, the last third, is literally just giving people, what can we do now? What issues can we work on, frankly, in in a bipartisanship from below kind of a way, whether it's opioids, whether it's criminal justice, whether it's, you know, better education for kids when it comes to STEM. You know, what can we do? And it's a, also, it's a tough love letter to both parties to kind of get both parties a little bit of a, of a gentle kick in the butt that, so we can get out of this just waking up every morning freaking out about his re- most recent tweet, and yet we're not building the kind of movement that we're going to need to make sure that this never, ever happens again. Can you give me an example of what we can do to begin to understand each other? I'm done down here uh, in a Midwestern retirement cocoonville elderly community where they, they gave me crap because they knew I was the guy that liked Hillary and uh, that was voting for Hillary. And they, everybody, now now we've gone full radio silence. Nobody talks about it. Nobody seems to want to deal with it on both sides. I'm just curious, where where's the, where's the jump off point? Where do we start understanding each other and how do we do it? Is it possible? Look, it's possible now. I'm not a Pollyanna guy and it's not a Pollyanna book. You know, the book is called okay. Beyond, the Me- Beyond the Messy Truth. Um, how we came apart and how we come together. But I'm not a Pollyanna guy. There's some stuff we're just going to have to fight about. You know, I'm not going to turn my back on Muslims who are being persecuted or LGBTQ people who are being insulted and attacked even by the president, you know, immigrants, you know, the whole list. I think that we, 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 I'm proud of the circle that we drew in 2016 that included all these groups that have been marginalized and spat on and pushed out for so long. We pulled those people into this circle. I love that. The problem is, if you listen to people on the other side, they'll tell you they think we drew our circle a little bit too small. And there were some people who were hurting white guys, straight white okay. Christian men in the red states who were actually hurting um, economically and even culturally and didn't feel like our circle was big enough to include them. So part of what the, you know, in the book I'm arguing for is we're never going to let go of the traditionally marginalized folks who have been left out too long. But we've got to also figure out how to bring in some of these newly marginalized folks, and part of it is just listening. And here's the deal. Even if they never vote for Democrats, my book says, just please, God, vote for better Republicans. I mean, you can uh, stay a conservative, but I agree. support uh, this nonsense. And so that's the, that's the way to start the conversation. And, and the other thing I'll say is this. It's one thing where we fight where we disagree. We're supposed to fight where we disagree, maybe with with more respect. But we're now not working together where we do agree. Everybody agrees at an issue level that this addiction crisis is just completely out of control. I've got stuff in the book where we could fix this addiction crisis tomorrow. We're not even working on it. Um, Everybody knows the courts, the criminal justice system, is a complete disaster. Republicans had been leading on that issue of criminal justice reform in Texas and Georgia, Ohio. We're not even working on where that stuff where we agree anymore. Um, Again, none of our kids, red states, blue states, black, Latino, Native American, white, Asian, whoever, none of our kids are being prepared for the jobs of tomorrow. Artificial intelligence, are you kidding me? Robots, Mars, that stuff, even if you don't do education reform, curriculum reform, can't we get together and figure out a better way to teach our kids and at least acknowledge that the jobs of tomorrow are going to be so different, we've all got to be humble and, and, and listen to each other. But with education, addiction, criminal justice, these are big areas where, let's. why we have a rule, we'll fight from nine to noon every day, <laughs> and then from noon to three, we'll get something done. And then go back to fighting for dinner. I mean, we and can You know fight. what, Van, I will tell you, bring back the bring back the three martini lunch. That's what we have to do. That'll do it. Bring back the three martini. We're talking to Van Jones. Uh, the book is Beyond the Messy Truth. 
And, um, you know, you talk about reforming the culture of the media. You think being on panels where you were, uh, Van, where we know Van Jones is going to disagree with Jeffrey Lord and the, uh, uh, the, the robot from Westworld, Kelly McInerney or whatever her name uh, do you think? Do you think that? I'm sorry. That's Mike. me. By the way, that's me saying that, not Van Jones saying that. Okay. I just, uh, I mean, I'm still hurting. Um, do you think that? Do you think that's Westworld. helpful though when you're on CNN and you know that one guy's going to say this and you're going to say this and the, I, but there were moments of common ground. How do we fix the media? How do we fix the media in this? And do you have anything in the book about that? Yeah, I talk about this culture now of every conversation, left, right, or middle. Now just boiling down to I'm right and you're wrong, and that's it. Or worse, we're right and they're wrong. We're you know talking about each other, not even talking to each other. Um, and that there's got to be room now for another kind of conversation where the rules are, I want to understand you, and I want you to understand me. Whether or not we agree, you know, or, you, know you can understand without agreement, but, but, we, but you, you can't just fight and fight and fight and never have a breakthrough, never find any common ground, never talk about anything constructively, and never even understand each other and still have a country. And, but here's what's going to happen. You know, if the audience starts responding to a different format, that format will take off. But right now, the same people who, come, who tell me every day how much they hate you know, the fist fight and the food fight on TV, if you look at their media feed, what do they, what do they like? What do they uh, retweet? What do they share? It's Negative. always some you know, big fight or yeah. some one-sided you know, rant. And you know, until we start hearing you know, in cable, commercial, you know, television, you know, you can only have so many people change the channel before a producer or somebody is going to say, hey, we've got to go back to the food fight. So part of it is we've got to put better stuff on TV. But the other thing is that people got to actually start clicking and liking and interacting online with stuff that is a little bit more nutritious for the country. But even if, you know, listen, fixing the media system is later. Today, we just got to get the, your, your listeners off, off the couch, out from under the, the bed, you know, and empowered to start doing things that make the feel better. We can't just sit up here and freak out every morning and think we're going to build a movement that's going to attract people. If you're a progressive, this book is going to be very helpful to you in finding you know, concrete ways to think about things um, in a different way with a little bit more empathy and then some pathways to action. We got to move and on. Real, uh, real quick, because we just got one second left here. Uh, Van Jones uh, is our guest. Uh, the book is called Beyond the Messy Truth. Uh, a lot of people might not know that Van was a close personal friend of Prince, and uh, losing him was a gut shot for many of his fans. But, uh, you know, in your case, a personal friend. Do you think if his friends knew about his addiction, because he's a, uh, I mean, talk about an example of the opioid crisis, do you think he'd be alive today if people were more aware in no. his inner circle of what was going on? so hard to know. You know, I've talked to, you know, different counselors and stuff who've said that, you know, when somebody, you know, you know he, he concealed it so well that it's hard to know if we, if we had found out about it, what we could have done. So, right. we, 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 we all, look, I talk about that in the book as well. I know you got to let me go. Uh, beyond the Van, myth. Van, thank you very much. That's Listen, fun. when you have more time, I mean, we're in D.C., so you can come by. We'd love to hang out with you. Okay. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep making a difference. And come on when you've uh, got more time after a book tour. We'd love to love to have you come in thank and panel you. with us. Okay, my friend? We'll do it. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you Van. Thank you. Van yeah. Jones from uh, CNN doing one of those uh, rapid uh, book tours. But uh, really cool guy. And you know what? He, he walks questions. the walk. Yeah. He walks the walk a little bit when he's talking about... Um, finding uh, common ground and i think that uh it's just a this post world that we live in now and i and i live he, it down he, here he said something that really struck me where you know look let's be honest in our personal lives we have different conversations than we have on air right mm -hmm. and some of us and i think mike half the time you know really you address certain issues nationally that aren't necessarily part of the fabric of this program is because you don't have anyone else to talk to. Sometimes yeah. you want to talk yeah, to your friends. You want to talk to you want to talk to your guys. You want to talk to the audience because you don't. I haven't you talked need to about it on somewhere. this show. I have radio silence uh, down here. It's weird. Um, it's not uh, when when the election was happening. I have to be. I have to be very clear. I sure. probably said it on this show, but I should really say it again. I when you're a golfer in the world of white men golf, yes. the sport that I love so much, I have been a political minority my whole life as far as my feelings, and I've enjoyed it because I love the debate and I love the the, 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 the fight. The fight is fun. It was. It used to be so much more fun during the most recent presidential election. 
Um, it got to a point where I just didn't like bringing it up because I didn't like being the punching bag and I did not like the way I was spoken to. Let me tell you what it's evolved to because I don't think I've talked about that on the show. It has evolved now where it's, I mean, it is radio silence. There is nothing. I don't know what that means, but nobody's really talking about it. And it's not like they're not talking about not it Not even the me. loud mouths on the other side that used to spar with you. They don't bring no. it up? No, it's just we'll, we'll make a flip comment, a joke about it, and then I. But I will initiate it because okay. it's not being initiated on the other side, and um, it's. I just find it interesting. I think. I think the point is that there is probably frustration on both sides now with the current administration. I'm not telling anybody anything they don't know. I think on the uh, team that voted for him, there probably there, there's probably frustration because of the day by day by day uh, news cycle that that they see but i really don't know the thing about it is though uh it, you know when i reached out to van and i haven't had a chance because we booked him it was a late booking i didn't get a chance to read the book and i i want to read it i i'd love to know how we can you know r reach common ground and reach out to people because it really is a situation where it's almost a total shutdown well, right now because you know and again, I think we've probably all in, in our own way, even Rob, um, who, you know, generally likes to play like he, he does not get involved at all. But I know but you Rob, do. But Rob, I've noticed more than anybody on this show, Rob is probably more passionate and vocal oh, I, I, about I how it. he feels right now. But I'll say know? this, that, I, you know, I have friends on both sides of the, of the aisle and I have friends on both extremes of the aisle. But, and, but he doesn't have that many friends, just to be clear. But <laughs> as, as far as politics are concerned, if you're not in alignment with their viewpoints yeah. on either side, there is no forwarding of the conversation. No, it ceases. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. There's it's no just, forwarding of the conversation. It stops. It stops dead in its it tracks. Just, there's, it's, it's not a fun place to be. Mm. It's not what it was in the past growing up where there'd be an, an actual political discourse. No. There is no ball breaking that people's feelings aren't going to get hurt. Like yeah, it's it really it's, is it's meaner. It's nastier. Yes. It's more no shades of gray. You're a complete idiot. And I have I, you have no value. It's a terrible place that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. It is really, really a terrible place. I don't know how it happened, but I know he kind of alluded to it because I do think so. And this is from my team. I'm talking. And right. By the way, when I say that, some people get annoyed. Hey, crap. OK, yeah. it's he's it's a giant fan. That's it's right. your team and my team. New okay, the fact is, yes. loves the, the, the Red Sox. I, I put. I always talk about it because, of course, we've developed that. Mm. We we are talking about our teams. I totally agree with the Bowie common, Bay Sox. with with the common ground message. You know, where we have a common ground, where we find things where we agree, and uh, you know, you you have to do that. You have to start that tax way. reform. That's right. <laughs> no, what he talked about uh, with the Democrats. Let, box let me tell you. Stores. No, we we allowed we allowed one team to be the party of the common white guy, the the working white guy that's getting screwed. Right. Uh, yeah, I've always told people. Uh, I think his name is J D Vance. I'm pretty sure. If you want to read one book, and we'll stop being serious after okay. this. If you want to read one book, the book is Hillbilly Elegy. If you want to read a book about the uh, you know white America and poor white America. And how poor white America felt, uh, you know, it, 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 there's no secret that in in white poor areas you probably have some of the some of the examples of uh, institutional racism where you've got people that grow up their daddy said this their daddy's daddy said this you know you go into communities that may have never seen an african-american but they you know they're angry and then it, it just read the book and it'll tell you kind of where it came from and i totally agree that the democratic party kind of just assumed that those people would be around along for the ride and they weren't they were pissed yeah and they're still pissed and they're going to be pissed after this election too i don't know who they're going to be pissed at but I'll tell you one thing, uh, things might change. The only question I didn't get a chance to ask Van Jones was, do, and I'll ask you guys, do yeah. you think it's a pendulum? Do you think all politics is cyclical? Do you think we're, you know, this divided, hateful, angry period in our nation's history right now, do you think we will we will I've, swing back <clears throat> to anything where... I, I don't know, know, listen, I don't know enough about really politics... Important. To, yeah. to to and I'm I'm asking you guys because as far as I've been alive, I, I want it to. I don't remember the hate. 
I don't remember I, the hate there is. I don't think I felt it as a younger man. I think there's it, always been. You know, I think there's yeah. always, always been, been under the been. surface. There's I a, always. Been. I just felt really bad for Kitty. George Dukak- Wallace is great. Kitty Dukakis. Great oh, she drank rubbing alcohol. Oh my God, it was so rough. Sad. Mm. That was so, so sad, sad to no see happen. Olives. So sad. So brave. It's hysterical what you cherry pick with your political but, knowledge. <laughs> it's like you will get these little Republican I talking know. points that will just be, but they're innocent Republican talking points. Well, it's wait, fascinating. He's, his whole basis of, pol- of politics based on what he's seen on Best of Saturday. In a life special <laughs> on VH1, uh, I had a great poli sci professor, the kind that you would uh, like follow around and grab the classes that he taught in college. I liked the guy that much, and he used to draw the same graph all the time, and it was two overlapping ovals, and it was the far left and the far right, but most of it was in common. And he yeah. said there really is so much more that they share than that they don't share, mm. and what we need is one or two candidates to come into power or at least into the attention of the public that starts to emphasize the commonality again. And that's what's going to bring us together. I I, I agree with you. But until then, (laughs) it's not going to happen, but I do honestly feel that it will happen because we are right now in a... I had drinks with some friends and on Saturday night. Drinks! And it, we are in such a toxic place. To have four different people from four different walks of life all agree just how much everything sucks right now. And okay. it won't last. It can't last yeah. still, because it makes you feel not. sick. Still better than Venezuela. I, yeah. I, I have, a it third is still, world country. That is, that's a pretty good way to look at it. Still better than Venezuela. <laughs> I mean, that's seriously. A, yeah, put that on well, the you're right. Those poor people. You're Print right. On the quarters they the can't even bill. buy bread. <laughs> I hate the ten minute radio tour though. You know what you oh, yeah. the guy's like, ah, oh, we gotta move it. I, I need Van Jones for a long I think I, I I try to remain optimistic. Uh you have to. and uh you know, and the thing is I also should tell you about my my issue that seems to be stronger than ever is the environment because I find myself driving along uh the highway here in southwest Florida yes. and looking over at places that I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I can see that being underwater in 10 years. Oh, God. You know, I truly feel that way. Uh, that's, Mike, uh, that's you've my always got Dak Prescott. Yeah, I've got yeah, And that's Ezekiel right. hey. Elliott. Yeah, baby. We're excited about that. We You're not underwater break. when it comes to fantasy football. Van uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jones, check him out on CNN. He's really, really good on uh, that show. And Beyond the Messy Truth, how we came apart, how we come together. He mentioned it 15 times. I mentioned it 15 times. And then I got to ask him two questions. We'll take a break and uh, come back with more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mara Show. You said the you know, we have many income streams right here at the Mike O'Mara Show. We have uh, the bonus shows. That's mm-hmm. a big one, isn't it, Rob? Cornerstone. Yeah, the yeah. show depends on Work it. Work harder. Real, real important. Uh, go subscribe to the TMOS bonus show. We have our Amazon uh, connection. Yes. Too. Yes, the Amazon portal is huge. You must always use it. Shop through Amazon. And, uh, of course, we, uh, we'd we like you to support our advertisers. That's very important, is it not? Yeah, and not just financial support, but support them morally. You know you're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Draft. Uh, fantasy football fans, uh, I know you're all over Draft. Uh, yes. We have we have so many drafts going between uh, Chalky Cullen and Oscar F. Santana oh, yeah. and M. O'Mara. Uh, that, by the way, those are our handles. Find uh, us. Let me tell you what it is first. Then we're going to talk about our draft. Draft is weekly fantasy football. It ain't like the other guys with Draft. You play real live snake drafts. <laughs> With other people, just like in a season-long league. Here's how it works. The draft lasts for a week. There's no management, no salary caps. Just set it and forget it. You can play a draft with one person, like I did with Oscar, for $90 that I won. Uh, And you can forget it. And uh, Oscar won last week. It's literally the only one I care about right now. I mean, he drubbed me. Drubbed me. Uh, once you're done drafting, that's it. No trades, no waiver wire. Drafts start every couple of minutes, so you can join one right now. The best part, cold hard cash. Drafts start from just a dollar, so there's a draft for everyone, even Marcus Serta. Who, by the way, came in second head-to-head against me. Sorry, Marcus. Love having your money. <laughs> Come and join us on Draft today. Uh, download the app anytime. Just search Draft in your app store. By the way, uh, it's exploding. In popularity, oh, especially yes, with our listeners. Uh, join a game in minutes or play right from your computer on playdraft.com. The choice is yours. For a limited time only, all new players get a free entry into a draft when you make your first deposit, but you got to use the promo code TMOS. That's right. Play a real money game just like we do for free. And thank you for the invites. I will be accepting more of them this week. Remember your promise. At- 
M. O'Meara. Uh, did I say 25? 25 $1 bets you would honor this week. All right. Uh, <laughs> do it for free. Thanks, Rob. Just for using promo code a TMOS on uh, your it first is. deposit on draft. Uh, just search draft in the app store or go to playdraft.com and play free with promo code TMOS. Mike O'Meara, man of his word. Man hey, of his word. Want to clear I am. Uh, ah, there you go. I, I've been dying to tell you about my, my weekend. I had one of the greatest weekends I've had in a long time because the centerpiece of the weekend was T-Ball. So many wonderful pictures. Oh, wonderful God. pictures this weekend. Like, what loved a it. Time. Was it I loved everything it. you thought it would be? Because you've been it, you've been to it through it before with your girls, right? It was everything I thought it would be. It was fun. Uh, I'm such a phoebe. I'm so broken down, uh, but I don't care. I jumped in. You know, I I wasn't a coach, but I jumped into it. Of help the coaches because I I'm a Type A and I wanted to do that. Let me tell you the. Uh, Carl and I are very very similar with, uh, and you guys you've seen in this looks. Too. You, I know. You, it, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sheck. Uh, She's not going to melons. <laughs> <laughs> melons? What's big, Thornton you're, Melons? You're Thornton going, melons big, you're big going to Big Tall. tall. Hey, nah, I'm going to go to Dillard's. Hindenburg line. <laughs> since, I gotta, since, since I have to get a suit. God, Oscar looks good in a suit, Rob. We don't look good in suits. No, I require we don't black look good magic and witchcraft. I would be willing to discuss the, our wardrobe. Like if you'd want to monitor, let let the boy put a suit on. But I, I mean, it's just a thought. But yeah, I know you've already thought I'm in, about and it. I'm in are a, you wearing I'm, some sort of clown suit, like with a leopard skin tie or something like that? What are you? I'm doing? wearing you? the suit you saw at the funeral, but with a more festive tie. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Anyway, we'll talk no, about no it. animal the, prints this my, year, Mike. The, the clown suit <laughs> might be an act too. Yeah, you're right. I understand. I don't uh, want to come out too zingy and sort of offset the I reveal. Understand. Not so I much zany Bruce. at the front. That's right. Uh, zany in the rear. So getting back to the whole thing, <laughs> we arrive motto. at T-Ball. We're, we're, like we're up mullet. early. We uh, the, we have to be there at 830. Uh, the game starts at 9 o'clock. Uh, we're going to meet the coach for the first time. He's going to get his uniform. He's going to get his hat. He's going to meet all the other kids. It's really, really exciting. And we're up like ridiculously early like we're up so early we're more than prepared it's silly how was his it's how was the boy's mood the night before because uh, i imagine he, he was almost uncontainable no it wasn't that because he's four and nothing you know you don't process things that way he was he excited he was excited when he got up in the morning when he put on his helmet uh and he was holding his bat i took a little picture of that carla and i have um what would best be described probably as the same level of social anxiety where when we when you put us into a new situation, there's just enough anxiety to make us kind of snip, 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 sure. snip, snip at each other. And that, uh, you know, there's a wide variety of uh, intensities. It can be extremely intense if something goes awry, or it can be on the low level and you don't even say anything. W well, I probably outdid her for the social anxiety. So Here's the it, instruction we got. If it bubbles go. over, you can't go towards the outsider. You have to attack from within so well, you're natural I, targets for each other naturally going into this environment which is the environment of the young parent <laughs> my anxiety level is elevated okay because sure. yeah. i know that it's like well who's your grandfather <laughs> not his grandfather <laughs> father <laughs> father <laughs> uh so but i didn't get that fortunately Grandpa. the thing is so that we get one instruction. Carla has run point on this. Good. She takes this off of my plate. I do things like take him out to the field and practice with him. I do things like go along with them to get the equipment. Okay. She does all the logistics, all the emails, where he's supposed to be, what he's supposed to do, and she's great at it. And she does a really, really wonderful job. Here's what happens. The, the instruction we get is, and it's like one of these parks where you all have them in suburbia, where there are 35 different fields that are sure. out there. And you arrive and, and, and you get the diamonds everywhere. And the instruction was that the team will have orange uh, shirts and black hats. That that's going to be the orange and black kind of pumpkin Halloween uh, color scheme is what it's going to be. Mm. Are they that's, called, that's is it. the team called the Mac Macintoshes? No, it's not, uh, but thank you for that. Uh, I, I know you care. And so uh, we we arrive at the field, and uh, there's a team with black jerseys on one field, and then off in the distance I see black hats and orange jerseys. Ah. Mm. And suddenly as we get closer, I'm like, oh, my gosh, those are – and I'm looking, and these kids are like redwoods. Nah. These kids are, are – and I'm like, this is – he's too young. <clears throat> 
because we're kind of sneaking him in sure, too sure. young yeah. anyway. They'll red shirt him for a kindergarten of, and they'll put him well, up we're for doing sports. The, we're doing yeah. the opposite. <laughs> yeah. oh, it comes out in the wash. Let's <laughs> tee ball. Get them a head start. Get yeah. them a head start. Come on. Come on. So I see and Play I see with these the big kids, boys. <laughs> and I immediately, I immediately, without thought, go into hyper anxiety mode. Oh like, yeah! Oh, great. Oh great. Okay, we've got the. This must be the way they grow them down in Florida. Look at the six foot two five year old that's right. down here. That one kid's Dominican. Fanta- He's thirteen. Yeah. It's I'm like- watching Dora the Explorer. <laughs> and and like and and this and and, and let me play the sound. Everyone's this is the sound. Age. This is the sound immediately with no waiting. Carla's not doing this, by the way. This is all me. Let let me play the sound of my anxiety. Oh, it just no. goes and I, and I start saying. I said, Carla, Carla, did you? And I'm oh. and I'm, I'm I'm in court. I said. Did you check the ages for this? Did you know? Is he? I mean, did I know you? we're bringing him in young. She's like, <laughs> calm down. I'm like, well, did you see these kids? And I'm really, and within probably six minutes, I realize it's a, it's a totally different a little team. league team. It's a totally different. <laughs> it and was we're tackle first. football. <laughs> By the way, we were first. We were first. So oh, okay, uh, all right. So then it's like I said, well, what field? She said, well, it's a uh, field number one. And I look like. And I point, I point, I point at the backstop where the number one is on the back of this field. But this is how I do this, okay? She said, "What field are we on?" She said, "I think it's field number one." Eight hundred question marks right. afterwards. And I point at the, I point at the backstop. I, I hope this translates on video. I'll show you how I do okay. it. I point at the backstop and I go, <laughs> you know, and and because so A I'm total really lack of containment of frustration. And I'm just pointing. nervous. I want yeah. to meet the coach. What's I want to see Michael the other kids. doing during all this nervous energy? He's being energy. four. He's being four and just like la la la. You know, I wish I could be like Can that. You, you know, yeah. you know, it's, daddy's uh, melting uh, down again. I'm gonna, uh, I'm daddy gonna shut not, this out. In my mind. Daddy, daddy dandelions. <laughs> daddy was trying to gather himself. Daddy did gather himself uh, prior to the other kids arriving because I just said I I, I psyched myself into it. I said. Just go zen, go zen. Just through. This is yes. nothing big. Zen. Is but daddy, this is my only son. This is this is my first son. This is the first sport that uh, you know outside of the private hockey coach thing that he's got right. there. Uh, and by the way, he's got practice tonight, and then he's got hockey practice tomorrow afternoon. So we're 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 all in on this. I love this. I'm sorry. Sure. He's, you know, keep a boy in sports, as Ray Nicoletta said to That's me. Right. Keep a boy in sports and keep him out of courts. You are always the talking way I look to Ray Nicoletta. Co- Coach Nicoletta. <laughs> Coach Ray Nicoletta. Mike, well, any hot moms show. outside of your, your I, wife, clearly? I did, no. Uh, hold on. We'll get to that in a second. Oh. Did I mention that I met Coach Grogan from uh, at my high school reunion? My my baseball coach from uh, from high school came to the reunion. And it was like one of the you greatest did, moments. You did mention. He that. said he looked yeah, the same. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was cool. It was very cool. Ages. So the other kids arrive, and the coach arrives, and the coach is chill. Uh, oh, there's the coach? A, the coach. Uh, <laughs> 30s. Okay, so not a kid. Maybe almost 40, dad, 35, like 36. Great shape. What's a normal? Uh, they're all in better shape. Like than a V back muscles. Uh, sure. There were there were some uh, there were some fatties. Muscles. There were yeah. fatties and Uggos, uh, Oscar. <laughs> there were fatties and Uggos. And those were um, the two teams that played, right? <laughs> the fatties and the Uggos. <laughs> yeah. And I I get there and 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 the dads start arriving and I am not feeling any level of inadequacy whatsoever. I'm actually feeling quite Good. normal. And uh, I, I meet a dad who uh, I'm chatting with, uh, and this dad works in in, uh, in in this area of retail where he has to to work. And I I suddenly kind of got into that. I said, "Oh, this is tough for you. I know this is these Saturday and Sunday are your days." So uh, it's like, and I just I, I hit it off with him, and we chatted for a good long time. Uh, you know, the other parents there there were. There was a a dad there that took charge before the coach got there, got the kids organized. My job was to line them up prior to batting. They all line up and back at one another when, when they're going to hit off the tee. And, and, and each each team goes through once and then goes through another time. That's, the uh, the that's guy the that took charge before the coach got there, that obviously was a very proactive guy. Yes. Did he by he any was chance, young and super fit. He was young and super fit. By and any I didn't chance have did he sound like Darren him. McGavin? Shoot! Oh! Bumpkins is! Ah, yes! Line up over here. Yeah. Hey, Slugger. Hey, how you doing, Slugger? There you go. You wanna wanna bat off the tee? (laughs) Bat off the tee. Shoot! Bumpkins! 
Um, thank you. Aren't you going to go, go out to eat? <laughs> <laughs> we are going out to eat. Uh, so, Darren McGavin, I will get more lines from as, that, uh, that as show. As the holidays yeah. approach. As, as, as the, holidays the official, that is the official holiday impression of our new fall season. Yeah. <laughs> I go, my Darren McGavin goes from The Natural, the movie The Natural, to A Christmas Story, to 500-year-old movies. Go, hey, no, so classics, Mike, those Netflix, are classics. Get on those Netflix, are Netflix are and watch some uh, Call Check the Night Stalker. <laughs> yeah, I lost that one, but I ruined the guy in the next deal. Uh, anyway, uh, so... Uh, they, I'm lining the kids up to to bat, right? And uh, and that was my job, and that is the definition of kitten wrangling. Yes, tough stuff. Uh, but I put uh, my little guy gave him some big league chew, and then I put some eye black under under his eyes, and Aww. they were it was as adorable as anything. And uh, and then they get up, and they all hit the tee and not the ball, you know. And <laughs> so the ball falls they, off the tee. So the ball falls off the tee, and then when they make contact with the ball, they still hit a lot of tee, but they hit the ball too. And then it goes out in the field, and then they run. And the most and this is the greatest moment. If you ever have a tee baller, the greatest moment is when they hit the ball and you see them run to third base. That is that oh, is a truly special. Way. Oh, they run! They run everywhere. They're they're running oh, all over the place. We'll they don't know the where table, they're going. Right. Yeah. They, they, they don't know where the hell they're going. We'll just they're running in 15 the different video. directions. Yeah, it's, it's terrific. I know? think if and they hit the tee and the ball falls, it should count as a bunt. <laughs> There's no, <laughs> Did there anyone no outs. connect? Did anyone? Oh, a natural. They, they all connected, I would say, my kid's last at bat. He uh, he hit it into the outfield. It got nice. through wow. on the ground, but it got through the the row. And then when they hit the ball out into the field, they all collapse on the ball simultaneously. All these <laughs> little guys, you know, and they were all cute kids. All they were all wonderful kids. Every single one of the kids on my my son's team is fantastic. Uh, so anyway, uh, we will uh, we'll take a break. We'll Do they have a, a little break. tent on the side, just like in the NFL, where they go and have full meltdowns? Uh, no. No, uh, the meltdowns are like, where's mommy? <laughs> and then one of the parents brought snacks. Orange really? Wedges. Pirate's booty. Fantastic snack. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, the baseballs were covered with, like, cheese dust at the end of the year. <laughs> that was, is uh, one great. cheesy baseball. It was fantastic. <laughs> but here's to T-Ball. More Yay. to Woo. come. Uh, we will take a break and come back with more fun and more thrills. You are listening to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. No Tuesday. You know what that means. It means it's mailbag day on TMOS. Yes, Tuesday's it is. Tuesday's the day where Rob reaches into his bag and pulls out <laughs> your letters and emails for Mike to read. <laughs> Got a birthday greeting? Send it to Rob. Want to hear an impression? Send it to Rob. Just want to say hey? Send it to Rob. The guys also love packages, too. Send your note to Rob <laughs> at MikeOmerishow.com. That's Rob with two Bs. Or if you want to be old-timey, P.O. Box 32101. Washington, D.C., 2007. Tuesday is mailbag day on the Mike O'Mara Show. Thank you. Thank you, Jim Amato. We appreciate that. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Cornerstone First Financial. If you're buying a house, you probably don't know what you're doing. No offense. Tricky to do. Yeah. You know that. Uh, you don't do it all the time. So doesn't it make sense to consult with an expert that has your best interest in mind? You need someone who understands the best way for you to get what you need. Our friends at Cornerstone First Financial will be able to get you through the finance process quickly and easily and at the best rate possible. Right now, interest rates are low, 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 so now is the time to look in uh, before they go up again. Uh, B, and, and not look in, lock in. You lock, lock in. Lock it in. Lock in. If you buy your house Locking now, around. you'd actually get a better rate than I did because interest rates are even lower than when I bought mine a year and a half yeah, ago. Yeah, you could get a bigger house than Oscar. Well, uh, you can, can click that. their banner on our website. You can call <laughs> Cornerstone First Financial, Thanks, 202-625-1221. <laughs> Mention TMOS and receive a free appraisal at closing. Uh, that's at cornerstonefirst.com slash TMOS or 202 202- 625-1221, licensed in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, and Florida. Cornerstone First Financial. Personal attention from application to closing every ball. Can I offer you a quick word of praise? Yes. You were I wonderful. You were wonderful on Omericast. Yeah, you killed. Um, you know what? If I if I if I did the show prep for this show that I do uh for Omericast, I would probably be extremely funny for about a month, and then I'd have to go to rehab. My my favorite part is that you <laughs> that's can- Daddy's way of saying he had a toddy or two before he went. 
It was 6.30. You were loosey-goosey. You were very, very super loosey-goosey. Yeah, loosey-goosey. Yes. And you were very quick to praise Jim Amato. Not so much praise for Marcus. And I felt that a little Jim bit Amato of a... That Jim Amato is really I'm, great. He has got a wonderful voice. And Marcus says, well, well, that's really great. I consider him a friend. Yeah. Well, uh, Marcus praises himself. What about so me? There's, not, uh, yeah. there's no it's need. He doesn't need help from me. He doesn't. He 200 doesn't episodes of me. <laughs> My God, that poor guy. All Marcus does is support this show 100%. And, and all I say is that, Mike, you were fantastic. Thank you. I, you I really know what? You, Tony Perkins was also great. Uh, you, you know what? You should uh, you get together with Marcus in New Orleans and have a toddy or two. And then know, a fist fight? Really <laughs> I don't think there's a, there's a need for a fist fight. I think no, everything's going to be... But I will say, I want to Just address that. something. I want to address something. He yes. had reached out and asked me to do something for Show 200, and then he booked you. So what I did was I stepped aside because I said, <laughs> you don't want... Excuse me? What? I said, I, he said what? do you want to do the, something... The, the, I think the inner ego of Rob Spiewak no, no, no. is just... Far from it. Just spilled you out. Stepped he stepped aside? Well, like he you said, were the first choice, but you deferred to me or what? He had, That's what I this think sounds like. he did like. reach out to me first because he didn't think he could get you. And okay. I said, of course, I would be glad to do it. He didn't get me. Call me down here. What am I doing? I'm taking a dump and going to play golf. I'm not, but you know, he, it's well, not like you're made, trying to get Van Jones on the he show. He made it sound like I had my feelings hurt that you were on the show instead of me. And that is not the case. I said, I'd love to do something down the road. But if you have the, you know, if you have the head of the corporation on the episode, you certainly don't need me to water it down. I, uh, I was. You just I made that whole episode about you. No, no. Far from it. I, mean, I think just, the whole compliment yeah. is about him. <laughs> right? He said, can I offer you some praise? And then, it, then he went on the right. street. And the whole fantastic. setup was for him well, to say that he stepped aside for me no, to go because on. Marcus like it was made some my sort gesture of, look like it was something that was, oh, not about me. I'm saying that Marcus, I was unaware that you made a gesture, though. I don't Did know you hear you anything else in that interview except for what was about you? I heard everything. I heard everything in the interview. I, I appreciate you listening to it. I, I appreciate you listening to it. It's more than I would do for anybody on the show. Understood. I would not because you know that I do not consume the the shows like you guys do, and I think I should. I should probably. Nah. In fact, I'll get right on. So there. you were misrepresented. Um, I was misrepresented by Marcus Serta, but you know what? Not surprisingly, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great show, and I never miss it. Well, he it was fun <laughs> chatting with him, and I love being interviewed, and I, I'd I love, love to do more interviews. I'd love to do more interviews. I'd, I'd love to do, you know, you should go on and, Tech 411. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll go, I've been on Talking Tech Jack. I, I'd like to go on Big O and Dukes again sometime, Really? Too, you know? Well, is he boycotting us or what? No, I asked look... you to come on last time. You said, no, I go to bed. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that you said it on the air. You said that on the air. But that was also when he was in town. So it would have involved. Oh, I'm sorry. It would have involved the trip. Well, I'm not driving to Fairfax. Yeah, I'm, not exactly. driving to, I'm not driving to their studio on top of the record store. I'm not going to do that. But a um, phone call would be nice. He could phone from bed. Okay, we'll do that. No, you know what I want to do? I want to do an interview in one of these magazines down here in uh, that one of the one of the Shishi magazines mm. down in Florida. And if I can't get into one of those, I want to get into one of those like circular magazines that... They have all these little like uh, advertising vehicles where they just force an article in there, yeah. and uh, you know the PR machine. I want to I want to do that because I I love being in those glossies. That's my favorite kind of yeah. Interview but to aren't do, glossies you know? dying? Wouldn't you rather be on a like a hip online publication? Yes. Radar online. Yeah, because yes, a glossy's yes. not going to transfer to downloads. That's just anybody. Your ego. By the way, if you have a viable entity, yes. I uh, I will do it. If you got a readership. Or- and, yes. and you have people show us your numbers. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, show us your numbers. Love to do because we like to get the word out yeah, about the show. Sure. We'd like yes. to do that. It'd be it'd be fun. I would. Yes. Uh, I would even enjoy adult that, sites. You know? Yes. Uh, no. No. Not uh, hard. No. Not no. Like don't a hard say that. Triple X. No, maybe no. like. Yeah. Would you do hard R? <laughs> hard R. I would do. Yeah. If I can cuss, I would do that. Yeah. I'd be uh, glad to do unlimited that. unlimited F words. Yeah, I do that. Uh, He's on be, Barstool Sports. It'd be, it'd be exciting. You the know? hottest fans uh, are the Red Sox girls. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know, uh, hey, congratulations. By, by the way, baseball, congratulations to the Houston Astros for going to the World Series against the L.A. Dodgers. Uh, sorry, Yankee fans. I think Major League Baseball is upset. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would have been pretty good for baseball to have a uh, two-coast series, don't you think? Well, Houston, look, uh, Houston's you mean far they have as market. The against the Dodgers? You yeah. got one and two markets. Um, Houston and LA is four and two, four and one. Yeah. So four and one isn't bad. You got so top five all better around. Better to have the Yankees against the Dodgers. Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> really noted. <laughs> Thank didn't you. Didn't we? Thank you very didn't much. we crown them last week? Oh, we thought they were going to take it. Yeah. That it was well, going to be I, New uh, York, LA. 
I got on social media and I was able to marry myself to the tragedy. I'm sorry, the, uh, the Yankee uh, <laughs> loss. Uh, and uh, the thing that was cool about it was uh, I married it right before. I said, I've never had an occasion. This is the truth. Never had an occasion to passionately root for a Houston sports team. And that changed Saturday night when I watched the Game 7 and I watched every inning of it. And I was able to celebrate the great joy of the Houston Astros. And now the Houston Astros bench coach, Mr. Alex Cora, will be the brand new Boston Red Sox manager when next season begins. So, oh, wow. That's even before Call and that's even before the World Series starts, which is kind of... Let me ask you this. Yes. Are you happy for... Look, I saw the news break when the Yankees lost and Houston won. Mm-hmm. And as far as the Astros are concerned, I'm happy for that community. Me too. For Houston, yes. right? Especially yeah, I, with the I flooding to... they just went through, the, the hurricane. Yeah. Like, that's got to be it's, great it's for that town. It's a city that's taken some yeah. punches, yeah. and you want to see that city come back and have uh, some joy. No team deserves it more, in my opinion. No city deserves it more uh, when you see that. So I'm very, very happy with that. And uh, because my own sports world... Outside of fantasy sports on draft, right. I, uh, my team, I don't know if you caught a look at that Giants game yesterday where Eli Manning was just like, got hit by the ball, dropped the ball. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was. Uh, I, I was on a scale of one to ten, how would you rank his mouth hanging open? Uh, halfway because he's just more. Five. He gets, he gets the <laughs> sneer. He oh. gets the sneer. The sneer is when he's pissed at other players. So he gets the, this is the way the mouth is like. <sighs> When he's really like screwing up himself, then it goes full wide and just the <laughs> Eli Eli Manning. Is by the it way, hard voted for by him to stay voted mad? by his peers the most overrated quarterback That's in the NFL. Is, Thank you. Is it hard for him to stay mad at other players because he's forgetful? Yeah, he forgets. You know, and he'll like he's like you dropped that pass. You dropped that pass on me, and then ten minutes later, it's like we'll go out for ice cream later. He could play t ball. <laughs> you know, I'm what? running to third base. I feel like you're you're New off, York Giants one in six, ladies. And your ninety dollar win really softens the blow for your loss with the Giants. Hundred percent, right? Yes. That's the only one I look at. That's the only one I care about. That's the one that's I, real money. So, just for co- some context, right. I. I'm I'm watching our, our draft live all day. Where I'm like, oh, I'm up. You got the I'm, app. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah, I might win. Uh, I might win uh, ninety bucks. And by the way, we the only time we're gonna have to make a decision is when uh, one person wins two doubles in up. A row. Oh, and they're up because once one person wins two, oh, yeah. the other throw person's gotta go. That's it. Yeah. So I, I get, right, I right now, right we're now, we're back uh, in it. You're just handing you the win, flower back and forth. <laughs> Is, do you understand what I'm saying I with do. this, Rob? I do. If Even Oscar Steven. wins this week, I have to come back one more time. Yeah. If I win, Oscar has the option yeah, of saying, it. pound sand enough because you know, yeah, he's off to yeah. Cabo for a weekend. I'm bleeding. <laughs> so we got to say bye-bye, so, everybody. So Mike has this phenomenal t- – this entire draft is, is weighing on the Cowboys game, right? Right. And I'm like, ah. Uh, Maybe the 49ers will put some defense. It'll be great. Not the case. Not at all. Yeah. I think Elliot had 40 plus points, which is almost impossible to get. Unless you I have, have a, a question for game. Rob Spiewak about that. Uh, is Ezekiel a Bible name, Rob? It is. I okay. believe it might be an Old Testament name, Mike. Well, I would have to check. He saw God for me this weekend. <laughs> so Mike is up roughly by sixty points, and I'm like, Whoa. going in, but you haven't. But going into the game where you had your quarterback, well, uh, I had Matt, Matt Ryan, Ryan and Julio night. Jones. Is the Pats game Sunday Night Football? You're sitting right. there. You've got Falcons mm-hmm. Pats rematch of the Super Bowl, and I'm like, oh, they're gonna come in, and Mike doesn't know what what hit him. If he's even looked into this draft, he's already counting his money. I pretty much was feeling pretty good about it. I was saying that would have to be uh, like an amazing performance. Yeah. So he had to be up close to a 40%. Like a breakout, right? A 40 point per, we, you know, performance. We had Nikki Dime with the Merle Julio Jones. I'm like, oh, right. Merle's not going to let me down. She's always putting out. Let's do this. <laughs> and <laughs> and, I, and then you look at the first quarter. You're like, oh, you know, the Falcons really haven't hit, hit their, their stride yet. And then yeah. second quarter. Third quarter. And I'm looking at the zero. Zero <laughs> points. It does seem the to Falcon do- side. I'm Blair, like, doesn't it? There's no way I'm coming back. Mike's <laughs> well, in the bank for 90 bucks. Congratulations. Well, here's the, the good deal. I will, uh, you know, we get to go one more time. Just like I went to the well, uh, you'll have to go keep, to the keep, well. Keep, uh, and, uh, keep we'll running. Keep it. Yes, yes, uh, Rob Spiewak. Ezekiel is the central protagonist of the book of Ezekiel in the Hebrew Bible. <laughs> And it's considered by many to be a prophet, and I know how much prophet means to you. So congratulations to you and Ezekiel. Hello, Ezekiel. Thank you for scoring those points for Mr. Mike Romero. If only he could have duplicated your lineup. 
in his other drafts <laughs> with listeners, with fans of the show. Wouldn't that have been wonderful, Ezekiel? And he shall be Ezekiel, and he shall win Mike $90, and it shall be on draft, the new sponsor, where we get to smooth them every single day. Anyway, that's it. Uh, we got to take a break. And uh, when we come back, uh, hey, it's already time for news Ooh. you may not need or so with a wonderful kicker. Is it? Yeah. Love Hope you it. enjoy that. This is NPR. <laughs> Fantastic. Exciting. New. Does twice the work in half the time. It's Pony Boy 3000. If you have TMOS trouble, he'll fix it before you can say Sugar Glider. He solves every problem, retrieves any password, defrags any disk. It's Pony Boy 3000. He speaks, he smokes, he moves at the speed of sound. The Pony Boy 3000, always ready to assist you. Pony Boy at MikeOmeraShow.com. Get ready for the fun. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Quip. Here's something to chew on. Recent studies show that good oral health impacts your overall health, but still, most of us don't brush our teeth properly. But you can start brushing better today. Introducing Quip. Q-U-I-P. It's called Quip, the new company that's refreshing the way people brush their teeth. Quip is an electric toothbrush that packs premium vibration and timer features into an ultra-slim design at half the cost of bulkier brushes. Quip is sleek. It's elegant. It's got a little carrying thing that uh, sits on my bathroom mirror love where it. I put it so in there cool. in the little slot. I love it. I love this toothbrush. Quip is backed by leading dentists, and it was named as one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2016. They also won a 2016 GQ Grooming Award and made it on Oprah's 2017 New Year's O list. Best of all, Quip starts at just $25, and you can subscribe for new brush heads on a dentist-recommended three-month plan for just $5. That includes free shipping. Go right now to getquip.com slash TMOS to get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. You heard right. Your first refill pack is free at getquip.com slash TMOS. TMOS. That's G E T Q U I P dot com slash TMOS. Support TMOS by supporting Quip. It will be love at first brush. News. News. Boo. Me, 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 me. On Friday, Dr. Phil hit a kid on a skateboard with his car. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Phil was pulling out of a parking lot and he was trying to get around a van that was in front of him by the river. No, what I'm kind sorry, of car just, do you think Phil McGraw drives? <laughs> an old Lincoln Town car. I think no, so, a classic. No, just a bigger. Uh, he was trying to get probably a Beamer. He strikes me as a Beamer guy. Uh, he's trying to get around a van that was in front of him, but he hit a skateboarder in a crosswalk. Uh, Phil checked on the guy. Gnarly. Uh, <laughs> Phil che- no, I'm not Dr. Phil. There's no Whoa, you're party. Dr. Phil. Uh, <laughs> the guy said he was fine, and they each went on their way. But a witness reported the accident, so police found the skateboarder. And when they checked on him, he suddenly had a shoulder and leg injury. Oh, oh yeah. I know you. Time you to know, sue. <laughs> it's not in this news story, but it's all predicated on the guy's age. I just have to know how old the skateboarder, skateboarder. was. If, he, if he's over 20. It, that you was know, exactly the number old. I was thinking. Yeah, That's 20 years old. Line of demarcation, right. Uh, well, now the skateboarder's threatening to sue. Shocker. Uh, saying Dr. Phil ran a stop sign and was in the wrong lane. <laughs> He was later on a stop sign and was in the wrong line. Uh, And he's missing work. Oh, so he's older, probably. (laughs) Missing work due to his injuries. Uh, Phil's people say he's willing to cooperate fully with police in their investigation. I will sell no fries before their time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Cameron Diaz went to dinner at an exclusive and crazy expensive restaurant called Matsuhisa on Beverly Hills, uh, it was in Beverly Hills on Thursday. On the way out, she dropped her wallet, which contained cash on credit cards. Why am I doing all the news stories like a I don't guy? mind it. Cameron Diaz, <laughs> what are you doing here? She should have taken the 5 to the 405. <laughs> a homeless woman found the wallet. Uh, but instead of taking off with it, she went to the restaurant to return it. How cool is That's that? That's nice. Yeah. They told her Cameron had already left, but uh, didn't take the wallet. So once again, the homeless woman uh, had an opportunity to steal it. But again, she didn't. Someone called the cops, and she waited around to turn it over to them with nothing missing. I think Cameron uh, Diaz ought to track that lady down. Give yeah. Her oh, yeah. Call. I think that would be very, very cool. 
as long as the lady took off on her skateboard. Oh, that's terrible. The haves and have-nots in Beverly Hills. It was a yes, longboard, Mike. Had all her stuff yeah. on it. All right, we've talked to... <laughs> <laughs> We've talked many times about Jay and Dave and the uh, late night battles. Uh, all right, David Letterman gets this Mark Twain Prize for American humor at the right. Kennedy Center. Uh, this is what's fun. The Hollywood Reporter, because they are nasty, yes. they reach out to uh, Jay Leno to, to ask him what he thinks, which is just, you know, that's what the Hollywood Reporter does. Hollywood Reporter were the ones that did the Jerry interview where he got yes, pissed off, right? Exactly. They're just pure yeah. snark. By the that's way, I never put two and two together, but if you look at Feud, the show that we all sure. watched, right? Sure. Yeah. The, those gossip columnists, yeah. it's like this, the Hollywood Reporter is simply the same type of entity, but not Absolutely. someone coming to your house and be like, hey, Let's Absolutely. talk about this. It's How always, are we gonna, it's right? always yeah. has existed. It always it's has existed. scummy, yeah. but that, it looks totally. real because it's in print. Right. Yes. That you're and like, no, this nice is all logo. gossip. Yeah, it's all they're, gossip. They're nasty. So they reach out to Jay just because that's what yeah. you do when the other guys get. And Jay's got all sorts of Jay quotes. Uh, but he's honest. He said there was a huge rift between me and Dave. I think he uh, felt really sad that he didn't get the Tonight Show. Okay, Jay. Yeah, sure. And uh, our shows are, were very competitive. Uh, whether it's two sports teams or two boxers, you can talk trash to each other, but it doesn't mean you don't respect each other. I like that quote okay. a little bit. That's okay. Uh, Leno also said the rivalry was serious, but that you have to be thick-skinned uh, if you're in comedy. Uh, he also said, quote, the one thing about Dave was even when he was mean to me, it was funny, and that's all that matters. I, you know, Rob, I would like the quote, but even though he's mean to me, you know, he's mean. I, I would love the, I I love the, the tone mean. of it yeah. when he delivered it. Because, uh, yeah. you I'm know, uh, it might have been uh, dripping with sarcasm. You know, Congrats on your Dave. car show, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thrilled Dave is getting the Mark Twain Award. Yeah, it's a great award. It's Mark Twain. Yeah, it's Mark Twain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so Jay, I don't know. It's just funny that the Hollywood reporter Gary reached Jay. out to Yeah, them, you know? and that's a, that is really a, they knew exactly what they would get. Did they win, get, though? They all won because you would talk about this feud, and then they were on that Dorito Super Bowl commercial. They, I know they got paid for that. Well, yeah, but Man. Dave knew exactly what he was doing there. He just, Hopefully they're really, really happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, looking forward to it. A new survey found that kids and adults have very different opinions on the best Halloween candy. Ah. Kids' top eight candies include stuff that's really sugary and usually fruit-flavored. I didn't know this, but the kids like Smarty Starbers, Twix, Nerds, Skittles, Sour Patch Kids, M&Ms, and Laffy Taffy. Adults' top eight are much more chocolate-oriented. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, M&Ms, Swedish Fish, Hershey's <clears throat> Kisses, Candy Corn. Candy Corn? Boo! God, Candy Corn ought to be wiped off the face of the planet. <laughs> Uh, fun dip. What the f fun is dip? fun oh. dip? Is, is is almost like a Kool Aid oh, powder man. that you dip a stick in and you, you lick a candy it with stick. Your face. Snickers and Kit Kats. So the adult, I mean, no, it doesn't, Joy. It doesn't surprise me no, because uh, Robert and Julia both lean towards those tart sour things. Uh, the tart. My kid likes sour. Kids sour. Kids sour. Kid like sour. And by uh, the way, Laffy Taffy can kiss my ass. Not that, funny. It's not, I'm that, not laughing. <laughs> you guys. Uh, the only overlap is M&M's Everything else steal away So steal mm. your kids candy You take the Reese's They're not going to care Because they're trying to get Laffy Taffy yeah. That's the way that Reese's were like gold bricks in, in, yeah. When we would go trade Yeah like treating. a pack of smokes in the slam um, <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow <laughs> on the show I will tell you all about uh, The uh, scary fat pirate That I'm going to be oh. for, for trunk or treat We're decorating the car It's going to be a pirate ship Big bone pirate I'm, Mike I plan Somalia. on going I plan on going off. Not a Somalian pirate. How Maybe could I be a opposite. Somalian pirate? No, no it's a uh, Mongolian pirate. <laughs> I'm going to go all in. I'm going to go all in like at the trunk or tree. We have to get there at like 5.30. We're going to get there at 5. Uh -huh. Decorate the car. And I'm going to be, we're putting a board out where they have to walk the plank to get oh. candy. Oh, cool. Yeah. So if yeah. I don't make one child cry, <laughs> I haven't done my job. Uh, so I guess you're looking to get a candy bar. Are you looking to get a candy bar? Look at my blacked out teeth. Oh, army. Do hey, like me. they do in the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Uh, turn around but have your mouth full with chocolate syrup. So when you smile, it looks like blood pouring out of your mouth. Yeah. And yeah. it'll get all over the, the, the pirate shirt, which will be a good look, too. No right? adult yeah. jokes. No. no. Nothing no. about butt pirates. Yeah, no hard what, what is that? <laughs> is it Javier Bardem who is the actor that does that? You know? 
Oh no! It's uh, Javier yeah, the, the, Bardem the, is yeah. in Pirates of the Caribbean. The latest he's in one. the yeah, new yeah, Pirate yeah. of the Caribbean. Okay. He's the guy that's got the map. Yeah. Come on, don't get to any new movies and at the all. Older, the older, the first one was I think it was Jeffrey Rush. He Not was also the very first scary. one. This is the one where he's got it the goo in the was mouth. Just that's in his, theaters. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There yeah. was a movie an hour ago, Rob. Yes. It's 2017. Do me a favor when you're around the kids. Avoid the phrase "goo in the mouth." Goo in the mouth. <laughs> no, but he's got the he's got the black coming yeah, out yeah, of his yeah. mouth. You know? yeah, well, but I'll do that. I'll dress as the pirate. I'll put the goo in the mouth, but I'll do the no country for old men Javier Bardem. <laughs> oh How about I make the kids flip, flip a coin? How would that go? For the kitty part. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Flip the coin. If you want the candy bar, you must flip it. You must flip the coin. Meanwhile, there's three parents you from your church putting up a sign in your yard <laughs> during Trump or Treat. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, why are you doing this? Oh, people always say that. Uh, anyway, uh, moving right along. Uh, according, according to, I'm obsessed with that character. According to a new survey of people over 50, hi. Uh, <laughs> the age that makes someone officially old is 83. Got that? Did they teach you that here? Uh, you're not old until you're in your early 80s. The survey also found the top five things people over 50 do that make them feel young. Check them out. Number one, driving. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> number two, looking much younger than they really are. Get oh, a lot of that down here. Sure. Uh, number three, Facebook. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I leave all the face. Hi, Barb. Hi, Chuck. Oh, uh, they're Number new four, house. traveling regularly. Really nice. That's good, too, if you travel. I wish I could travel more. Yes. Uh, and number five, I'm on this one. Ding, 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 ding. Where's my dinger? It's somewhere around here. I lost it. Pony, Pony looks Working. at me. Pony Working. looks at me. He's like, he wishes he could travel more. <laughs> <laughs> Not just between Maine and Florida, you hum. <laughs> Talking about the world. Hey, where, hey, where do you want to travel, Mike? The world. <laughs> like you old battle axe. Yeah, I'd like to go to Austria, you know, Scandinavia, England, Ireland. Want to avoid that clackety lankety place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now, finally, a little something, something. There's a 34 year old woman. Her name is Stephanie Dasco in South Union Township, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, I think probably more than any other state, has the award for the best names, right? South Union Township. And also, I think maybe Pennsylvania second place for kicker kicker ore because yep. uh, uh, Florida is I very so. strong, but Pennsylvania right. also good. Well, she has a court-ordered ban from going to the nearest Walmart. <laughs> we're, we're not sure how she got it, wow. but she, she, we know she hates the rule. She hates uh, adhering to it uh, because she violated that ban and went there earlier this month. The employees called the cops when they saw, saw her roll in. I guess she's got a track record there. Sure. Uh, when they got there, Stephanie explained why she had gone to Walmart. Quote, the cake Walmart sells is too good to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she, hey, I didn't say it. Oh. Stephanie did. Uh, she's facing trespassing charges. Uh, no more details in this story, but I'm sure it's uh, it's probably got a few more layers. Ah! <laughs> yeah, when they're that bad, you got to do more of them. Oh, uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I hear that Stephanie is a real piece. <laughs> okay, piece. Ah! I know, I know her favorite podcast. What? Walmart and cookies. <laughs> it it sounds like she may not be quite right, but I feel sorry for her because you never know. In a case like this, she may be a battered spouse. <laughs> Bye. I'm sorry. Cake batter. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll come back with the audio vault right here on the Michael Mara Show. You want me to have you had trouble breathing after laughing from Mike's impressions? Do you have questions about Oscar's legal status? Have you been injured as a result of tripping over Rob's legal little status. sounds? Call into the law offices of O'Mara, Spiewak, and Santana. You can call the show at 9 a.m. every Wednesday at 888-920-6673. The offices of O'Mara, Spiewak, and Santana. Legal advice that we're not legally certified to give. Well done. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Amazon. Halloween is next week, and Amazon is your haunted headquarters. The deals on Amazon are bootyful. Boo! Boo! Bootyful, I didn't say Bootyful. That. All the boys and girls are shopping through our Amazon portal. Cool kids like Sarah Larson, who bought a carpet cleaner, which will come in handy at the scene of a gruesome, unsolved murder. <laughs> Zach Zabrowski bought an electric chainsaw. 
What, no hockey mask? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Loftus bought a Bob Ross Chia Pet. That comes to life every full moon and paints haunted little trees. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and one more horrifying purchase to consider at this, the scariest time of year. Luis Munoz bought a new fleshlight because the old one Okay, I'm not saying that. I was back and I'm forth not all saying Come that on. Oh, yeah, we have to know. No, it's a... Too it's much his, lackety, it's, lackety. I'll tell you what, call us in the office. It's shorted we'll out. Yeah. The old one was was used. Uh, <laughs> Amazon's got Dishwasher costumes, candy, <laughs> and uh, all the horrifying paraphernalia that your haunted heart desires. Shopping Amazon through our portal changes nothing for you. means the world of this show. Do your shopping at Amazon, and please access via TMOS. Use the terrifying TMOS app or go through our spooky website. Now go spend money and spend a lot of it. And without further ado, let's open up the audio vault for today. This is Monday, October 23rd, 2017. Rob. You mentioned that the Astros are going to the World Series. Pretty incredible ending. This pitcher, Lance McCullers, pitched 24 straight curveballs. And that's yep. how he finished out. But they won 4-0, beating the Yankees. McCullers is one out away from his first career save. Joe Buck. The Astros are one out away from their first AL pennant. Bird into center. Springer says he's got it. The Houston Astros win the pennant. And as you mentioned, that uh, it's it's good for the the, uh, the Houston community. They need a win. Uh, the Astros owner Jim Crane uh, thanked the fans, and he alluded to that. And I think that's probably going to be the big emotional story when they start packaging the World Series yeah. for us to enjoy. Right but here's the owner, uh, Jim Crane. First of all, I want to thank our great fans uh, with a big hurricane that came through here. Um, everybody's been pulling together. It's kind of a dream come true for the city to be able to make it this far and have a chance to win the World Series. We've got a great team. Thank you, fans, for supporting us. And after hearing that, how can you think anything against them? That's no, just so it, great when for you, them. When you, you know, when you have communities that suffer, uh, it's great to have a sports team uh, pull people together. And I think that's, uh, that's very, very exciting. And uh, thank you, Joe Buck, for shaving. <laughs> Well, did he did. He shaved that. his beard stubble. He looked yeah. fantastic. He looked like a sportscaster. You know, he didn't look like he was trying to be 14 years old. It was I'd, wonderful. I'd it was like terrific. to go on draft and have a head-to-head uh, -head one with you about whether or not he has a beard by the end of the World Series. Yeah, well, is, is Fox got the World Series? Is uh, that, uh, that going to be Joe? Sports. I believe so. Yeah, I believe we'll find Fox out. We'll it was FS1. By the way, baseball yeah. doing really well. FS1. How about FS45 next time? You know what? <laughs> Can you hide your channels a little bit better? I mean, really, give me a break. Put it on a network. It's baseball, for Christ's sake. I have to uh, tip of the hat for a YouTuber named Captain Quinn, who built a device that he calls the Assault Trombone. Now, <laughs> what this is, it almost looks like a Ghostbusters pack on, on his son's back. But I think a, I did that move at American <laughs> University one time, the assault trombone. It was inspired by actions at the American it's University. It's role-playing, Mike. It was, uh, it's got a pressurized air tank like you would do to like spray your vegetables or your plants. Yes. You know? And so he pressurizes the air tank and then has hooked a trombone onto a rifle stock. Oh. So the kid can run around, his son can run around with the pressurized air, shooting the trombone at people. This is the sound of assault <laughs> trombone. That's pumping it. Say hello to my little friend. So that's so, assault wait, hold on, hold on. So he pumps it. He, yeah. It's got like, like it's an got air tank air. with a handle that goes up and down, and that's and on then a it, And then he releases something, and it just uh, it's on a rifle stock. Time? So when he pulls the trigger, <laughs> it's a trombone. It's a trombone. Uh, it almost looks like uh, one of those old Pilgrim blunderbusses because okay. it's a rifle stock, <laughs> like but a big trombone giant on. Pilgrim yeah. gun. Yeah, here okay. we go. Pumping. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> People are such idiots. <laughs> and is he is he coming up and backing people and scaring the crap no, out of them? No, they, they make it look almost like a Rambo movie, like a, scar, like a it's Scarface a, parody. Yeah, like a ten year old kid <laughs> right? running around in the woods. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh God, Jimmy Fallon is so cute. Oh, dear. What's he doing now? Uh, Justin Timberlake announced that he was doing the Super Bowl halftime show yes. before the NFL announced it. 
and he did it on Twitter, and he did it in a sketch with Jimmy Fallon. Tell me this isn't fantastic. Excuse me, sir, do you have the time? I was going to ask you, sir, if you have the time. I do have the time. You do have time? I do have time. You do have time? I do have time. You do have time? I do have time. You're doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl? You do have time! Rob, Rob, God, God almighty. (laughs) <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, that's brilliant and that's funny and that's what's happening. Is that real? That's really how the news broke. Aren't they so cute? I think they are. They're adorable together. <laughs> yeah. This I know. I uh, don't. You think we have some bias against him and the halftime show because that changed the, the complete paradigm yeah, of talk really radio yeah, for yeah. us uh, yeah. and you and guys it's especially. His first time since 2004 that he'll be back. Well, yeah, the last time he said there'll be no more wardrobe malfunctions. <laughs> How about Ugh. that? That's super uh, funny. Well, congratulations. At least uh, with Justin Timberlake, it will be a good show. He's a great right. entertainer. Very, very He is a good entertainer, but I hate the whole Fallon thing. You know, he's I my friend. It would be great if he did it like the thing he does on Saturday Night Live where he dresses up as a tube of wrapping paper. Now, that's <laughs> funny. That's <laughs> funny. Uh, let us close with this from the Graham Norton Show. It's really hard for me sometimes to wrap my head around that public people that are, you know, in front of America at all times actually have feelings and try to reason stuff through. This is a very funny story that Hillary Clinton told about when she was invited to the Trump inauguration. You know, I really tried to get out of going. Um, you know, we, we thought, okay, maybe others aren't going. So, you know, we, we called <laughs> the Bushes, and the elder Bushes were in the hospital, which I, I think was legitimate. And, <laughs> and so then, you know, we That's called funny. the younger Bushes, and they said, yeah, we're going. We called the Carters. They said, yeah, we're going. So, you know, Bill and I looked at each other and said, well, we got to go. Oh, my gosh. I, I just, I try to describe in the book what that felt like. George W. Bush, at, as it ends, says, that was some weird <laughs> <laughs> I just, it really surprised me. That's your Magic Audio Vault. Have a great Monday, everybody. Oh, oh man, that's it. Thanks for uh, joining us for another episode of TMOS. want to thank CNN's Van Jones for coming on the show. Woo! His book is Beyond the Messy, How We Came Apart, How We Come Together, and that's currently available through Amazon.com. But go through the Mike O'Mara Show if you want to get that book. Uh, that's it. Don't forget, tomorrow's Tuesday, the mailbag. Yay! All messages for our weekly mailbag can be sent to Rob with two B's at MikeOmeraShow.com. And our mailing address is TMOS Box 32101, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thanks for listening. And join us again for the best part of your day, the Mike O'Mara Show. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Ciao, ciao. One last thing. Please remember that MikeOmeraShow.com slash Amazon is the best way to shop for anything and everything. So, shop Amazon and get there through our website. Always open at MikeOmeraShow.com slash Amazon. Now, go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment.